Welcome, this is Professor Joe Bolduc and let's talk about fermentation. Fermentation is a process that we typically associate with bacteria and yeast and more specific than that during the process of making beer, cheese and wine. But we're going to talk about fermentation more in, as a metabolic pathway um, just to show you that some microorganisms can undergo different type of metab uh, metabolisms. Okay, so let's think about these microorganisms. In the presence of oxygen, these microorganisms can undergo aerobic cellular respiration. So that's to say that when these microorganisms take in glucose inside their cells, glucose will go through glycolysis and it's going to generate some molecules of ATP. It's going, glucose will then be converted into pyruvic acid or pyruvate it will be further oxidized by the Krebs cycle, uh, first the intermediate step, then the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, and chemiosmosis so that it can generate 34 molecules of ATP. So during this cellular respiration, what we can say is that one glucose molecule has been broken down or has been completely oxidized into six molecules of carbon dioxide. So glucose was completely oxidized. I'm going to run out of room here. Oxidized ED. There we go. So if you need a, a uh, brush up on cellular respiration, you should go back to a couple of my, my previous lectures and we say that glucose is oxidized because it's donating electrons and it's NAD plus that that um, acquires these electrons so NAD plus is being reduced into the form of NADH and then at the end of chemiosmosis uh, uh, these electrons have been donated so they've been re-oxidized and those those electrons were used to make up all these ATP so again that's in the presence of oxygen O2 so let me erase all these markings first before I continue because it's getting a little busy. So what if these microorganisms come into an environment that lack oxygen? So here's without O2. Some of these microorganisms can undergo a different type of metabolism known as fermentation. Just as a note, not all microorganisms can ferment, but some can go in between depending whether oxygen is present or not. Okay, so what if oxygen is not available? Those microorganisms that can will switch to a fermentation process. So in this case, we're going to still go through glycolysis. We're still going to take glucose and make pyruvic acid, but pyruvate will not be further oxidized. So in this case, in fermentation, so fermentation, I'm going to say that pyruvate will not, capital N-O-T, if I can write the O here, will not be further, get the F there, will not be further oxidized. <coughs> So remember, oxidation means it's going to give up electrons. In this case, what you're going to see is that pyruvate will be reduced. Oh, let's get the pen to work again. Be reduced. That means Yes, you're right, he's going to gain electrons. Okay, so what I have here in this picture is two types of fermentation pathways. These uh, products, lactic acid, as well as ethanol and carbon dioxide, are going to be known as fermentation byproducts, or as well as fermentation waste products. 
These are going to be the end. This is what's going to be given off as a waste product at the end of fermentation. Okay, so we're going to take a closer look at lactic acid and ethanol fermentation on the next slide. Okay, this slide is a slight variation of what the previous slide was. Um, I just liked it because it, it represents it a little differently, but otherwise the same information is present. It starts with glucose. We make pyruvic acid, so that's glycolysis. And from glycolysis, we're going to go either to make lactic acid or we're going to go through this path on the right to make ethanol. What I also want you to note or keep in mind is that some microorganisms can produce other types of fermentation byproducts. They're not always going to make lactic acid or ethanol. Some can make mixed acids. That means that they can make more than one acid byproduct, a mixture of them. Some can generate other gases. So here, uh, when we do ethanol, we're going to generate some carbon dioxide. That's a gas. Some fermentation products will give off other gases, such as hydrogen gas, um, sulfuric gas, hydrogen sulfuric gas. Um, some will give up different acids, so not just lactic acid. You'll have propionic acid, um, hydrochloric acid, I believe, sulfuric acid. Some will give different types of ethanols. So again, this is just two examples, um, and I just want to stress that there are a lot of diversity. Okay, so let me erase these, these lines again, and let's focus on that of lactic acid. So what I want you to know is that in the case of lactic acid, we're going to start with pyruvic acid here. Pyruvate or pyruvic acid is going to be reduced. And its reduced form is going to convert that pyruvic acid to lactic acid. So you notice, here's NADH. NADH has electrons. He's going to donate that to pyruvic acid to convert pyruvic acid to lactic acid. But in the process, by donating electrons, NADH is being oxidized to NAD+. So I have here that pyruvate. Yeah, let's see, pyruvate is being reduced. That means it loses, I'm sorry, it gains electrons. And it has to get those electrons from someplace. And it gets it from NADH. And it's now converted into lactic acid. So I'll put a little thing, and now because a little arrow, it becomes, let's see if I can get a pen to work, lactic acid. There we go. Okay, pyruvate is reduced. It gains its, because it means it gains its electrons. In the process, whoops, that should be a bracket. In the process, it converts pyruvic acid simply to lactic acid. It's one step. Okay, let's erase these. Now let's talk about ethanol. Ethanol is going to be a little different. There's going to be a two step process. The first step going to be decarboxylated. Decarboxylated. Sorry for my handwriting. Decarboxylated means that it's going to lose a carbon. So pyruvic acid is a three carbon molecule. It's going to convert into this first step into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is a two carbon molecule. And then again, here comes NADH. NADH is going to be converted to NAD+. So is that reduced or oxidation? Remember, NAD+, is the oxidized form. It's the oxidized form. So we're oxidizing of that line, we're oxidizing NADH, so that means we are reducing acetaldehyde. Okay, so what's the point here? In both cases, we've had NADH 
that forms the oxidized form of NAD+. There we go. <clears throat> Do you see any ATP? Any ATP being made? Let's uh, undo that. Okay, is there any ATP made? There is ATP that was made right here. But this part, if you recall, is glycolysis. Glycolysis. From this part on, from pyruvic acid, let's see, down to the bottom here, this is fermentation. Do you see any ATP ma being made during fermentation? No. So the only amount of ATP that you're being made, that's being made, is what happened during glycolysis, and you're only making two molecules of ATP. Compare that to cellular respiration, where you make 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. So you're making a lot less. So what's the point here? Why do we even undergo fermentation? Obviously, and the bacteria doesn't care if they're making lactic acid. They don't care if they're making ethanol. What they care is this step right here. They care about reoxidizing NADH. Why? They need ADH right here. I'm sorry, they need AD, NAD+. Plus. Let me remove all these lines. It's getting a little busy again. What they want is to convert NADH back to NAD+, plus so that they can undergo glycolysis again, so that they can make those extra energy, the extra ATP. So the main purpose of fermentation is to reoxidize. That's right. The main I get the pen to work again. I get this pen fixed. It's like the main reason is to reoxidize So reoxys NADH, and what, it's not shown here, but uh, actually no, just NADH, and it's going to reoxidize that to make. There we go. NAD plus. So that's what I want you to understand for this lecture. Um, this is going to finish the, the brief lecture on fermentation.